Okay, so we have few more civilizations left to cover from this book, People of the Earth. And as I said, I'm putting these as supplementary information. It's not the book is not so much focused on climate at all. There is a little bit of uh, agriculture involved in it, and of course, climate is a background for it. So I'm just giving it as supplemental information and very brief uh, introduction to each of the chapters from the book. Uh, coming to its favorite graphic rendition of timetables, uh, this is these are cultural developments in northern China and developments uh, happening elsewhere around the same time and the innovations that occurred uh, as a whole uh, human uh, civilizations. Okay, so we looked at village farmers in chapter 12, uh, both in northern China and elsewhere, and Yangshao. Uh, over this period here, Longshan, Xia, Shang, and the Zhu warlords more recently uh, from about uh, 1200 BC to uh, the beginning of uh, the Common Era. So we, the older books still have before Christ and Anna Domini, but we know now that we have switched to Common Era and before Common Era. And then Northern China unification happened around uh, AD 1. Uh, developments elsewhere along the same time, we had Uruk around 3600 BC, ancient Egypt, we just talked about the Sumerian civilization we touched on, in the civilization we mentioned in a couple of podcasts, the Minoans and the Mycenae, Mycenaeans we will look at a little bit more, in the next chapter Hittites and Assyrians, and of course we had bronze working and first states uh, and writing happening uh, around these times and first unified China. So the writings included symbolic languages, paintings of animals and uh, uh, various things seen and then uh, uh, actual writings uh, in terms of letters and symbols that were then interpreted by linguists along the way. Uh, quickly the map here, the distribution of farming cultures that immediately preceded Shang civilization in northern China. Each shaded area represents uh, a different regional culture which is not described in detail by the book. And here we are looking at the approximate distribution of Shang civilization uh, in about 1400 BC. So Xiatun and other royal sites uh, are close to Anyang, uh, which is uh, ta -da, somewhere here. So you have different cultures uh, here, and these are the regions. And you can see Hebei, Shangxi, uh, Anyang is here. That's what is mentioned here. Uh, Huangho River, Shandong, uh, Anhui, Henan, and so on. Um, just to summarize, again, very brief introduction. Early Chinese civilizations emerged independently of state-organized societies in the West, just like the uh, early hominins had uh, emigrated to parts of China and Southeast Asia and Australia early on, uh, sometime, some of them before uh, Europe. Uh, we also had uh, independent evolutions of uh, civilization. By 4000 BC, population densities were rising in farming communities throughout China. We talked a little bit uh, about uh, evolution of rice, domestication of rice, and spread of rice varieties into other parts of Asia, for example. And there are signs of social differentiation in village cemeteries. Exchange networks already linked thousands of small com communities by 4000 BC, spurring social and technological changes that included copper metallurgy and the widespread use of earthen fortification, which would require uh, baking and cooking uh, those materials, a new cosmology based on uh, animals and the use of divination to communicate with the dead came into widespread use. So for by 4000 BC there were some manifestations of uh, spiritual explorations and uh, maybe uh, early forms of religion. Uh, the Shang civilization of the Huanghu is the best known early Chinese state flourishing from 1766 to 1122 BC. It was probably the dominant state among several uh, throughout northern China. 
Shang society was organized along class lines with the rulers and nobles living in segregated precincts and the mass of the people scattered in townships and villages in the surrounding countryside. Shang civilization ended with the overthrow of its ruling dynasty by Zhu rulers. Uh, this surname still exists, uh, of course Wang, Huang, uh, Ho, Zhu, they are all around still. Uh, Ming, uh, Zhang, etc., who reigned over a, so Zhu rulers who reigned over a wide area of northern China from 1112 to 221 BC. China was unified under Emperor Zheng. That's another last name that's still around. Uh, Shi Huangdi in 221 BC. Of course, there is the history of Tibet, the, the battles between China and Tibet, and what goes on now, and so on, uh, are all interesting, but we don't need to go more into the history. We just want to come back to uh, civilizations in the Holocene and then go back and try to connect uh, back to climate as well. Okay?